look what we got in today. I've been wanting to do this project for quite a while now. So we're back up to the uh, doing an off the grid or small cabin project. And I, like I said, I've been wanting to do this for a while. And one thing that we, we've been wanting to do is build a shower system for uh, the cabin. It's got to be somewhat modular. It's got to be something that I can take out when I'm done using it for the winter. And I'm going to have it outdoors, so I'm not going to have any plumbing in there. I'm just going to have this be something that's right next to the to the cabin, and then um, just build a small shelter to keep uh, to keep the weather off of everything when we are up there. But uh, this is, you know, I've looked at quite a few reviews and done quite a, you know a bit of research on it. There's several different makes and models. This company might be the one that makes them. Uh, but this is an Eco, EcoTemp L5. So you get about a gallon and a half, it's about a gallon to a gallon and a half uh, capacity instant water heater and with a shower head on it. So it's specifically designed for sort of off-grid or uh, mobile use, portable, portable tankless water heater. The reason it's portable is it doesn't have a good venting system for indoors, though I have heard that you can sort of vent the top even though that's not really how it's designed um, but um, nonetheless it's actually it should be a pretty cool um, little unit so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually temporarily hook this thing up to see how it works and what I need to do and then I'm gonna start designing um, a modular sort of shower um, shower stall setup uh, that we can attach to the cabin when we get up there so I'm going to bust this thing open and see what this is all about. I haven't, I've kind of opened it up to look at the instructions, but I haven't actually taken it out of the box yet. So this is the Eco Temp water heater, it's like an instruction manual. And then, yep, see it's got the actual propane LP tank regulator built onto it. So it's already set up for a, you know, a barbecue tank. You can run them on the 20 pounders or a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. So that's kind of cool. It's all ready to go. And then your, looks like shower head sort of deal here. And that's got, I think these are all, I could be wrong, but I think these are all standard pipe fitting, like half inch pipe fitting threads. So you could probably hardwire this into a, your own, your own shower uh, faucet, whatever you want to do with that. But these are nice because it comes all pre-built and then there's a, open this up maybe, looks like there's a hanger for it with a different angle, we just snap, and there's your, you know, not the, not the highest quality, they said this rotates, oh yeah, so you get different patterns, that's kind of nice, yeah, it looks like this is a, probably a standard half inch, let's see is that three quarter inch uh, hookup, but yeah, not the most, uh, not the toughest looking thing, but it should work. I've heard no complaints about it. Let's take a look here. Looks like there's some, comes with a series of, you know, a bit of hardware, and this is why I want to set this up uh, before we get up there. I kind of have to do that with all these projects, you know, we're so far away from the cabin, you know, assuming it's not getting vandalized and I won't have to do massive amounts of repair. I like to do everything here and then just be able to enjoy it, enjoy it more up there. So looks like there's a quick release setup here for a hose. Looks like a, yeah, looks like you can, yeah, it's a standard garden hose and then I think you can bring it down to the half inch standard. Uh, plumbing pipe set up here. So that's kind of nice, I guess. I guess you could have your water. Well, I'll try that. I'll use that and see if it works, see if it doesn't leak. I won't be using this setup when we're up there because we don't have uh, city water. And it looks like some hardware here, some brass fittings. Mm, I don't exactly know what that goes for. It says in there. That might be for the propane. Um, all right, and even give you a little bit of Teflon tape. Pretty good size roll of that, actually. More than you'll need. All right, let's lift this thing out of the box here and just give it a, give it a look over. Here we want to break it. OK, 
Okay. Let's take this. Set this on here. So they had a newly designed exhaust fin set up that's better for wind. So they have designed this for outdoor use. And that's where we're going to use it. And if I'm clever enough, I might be able to pipe in a little bit of hot water to the inside of the cabin as well if I figure out a system. And still use this outside. That's my plan. If not, you can always fill up buckets and bring them indoors. So it looks like there is a hanger right here. Well, it looks like you can mount it on a wall. Oh, that's nice. Okay, cool. So you can mount this on a wall or a post with kind of hard mounted right there with screws or it looks like you can just hang it on a, let me get this right here. See that in the picture. You can just hang this on a, on a hook and just remove it really easily. So got a couple of different options for that. It's kind of nice. I want to take that off because it'll melt. Put this down a little bit so you can see. And I'm probably going to have to find a couple of D size batteries. I don't think this comes with them. There's an igniter down here. Um, under this cover, I believe. Yep. Yeah, you need to put them in there. So, looks like a couple of D-sized batteries is what you need down here. Looks kind of flimsy. I think I've seen people mention that, that those will fall off eventually, but I don't know what that does. Oh, that must be an adjustment. So, there you go. There's your hookups. Pretty simple, straight, super straightforward, right? Water input, water output gas input on off switch done simple the way i like it now we got a mount this i believe is an exhaust system that goes looks like you just mount that right in here okay cool protects the wall you know if you have this mounted to a a wooden post or a tree i guess it would just deflect the, the flame or the heat out out the front instead of the back. That's cool. Super simple. You don't even have to screw that in. That's the basic unit right there. Right there. There's the EcoTemp unit. Now, uh, as I said before, I'm not going to be, you know, here I'm going to do the test. This is going to be no problem. I'm just going to plug a a hose into the into the water inlet right here. I'm going to guess that this thing one of these, this, this threads in there, probably like this, for the, what, there's water? I tested it. Wow, okay, I need to dump that. Huh, looks like there's water in it, so they must have tested it. So I'm guessing what you do is you just, you just get this thing, and we can quickly do a test with it, with a quick release setup. Here. And then this can go on. Uh, kind of hoping that would go right on the. Uh, eh, this might be for a PEX type line. I bet that's for a PEX line. I'll have to check that out. That goes there. And this goes. Well, I, I'll try it. I'll see if it fits on a. Uh, on a hose and then and then you just click it on and you're you should be good to go that'd be kind of nice if that worked for the test I'll leave that i know this doesn't fit it so i think that's for a pex line like a water plastic water line i might even have some of that you should never do your own plumbing it's very dangerous okay so then the, then the other thing that you get with this and they recommend they highly recommend you get this this is a sureflow uh sediment filter so I won't need that for this test. I don't think I'm even gonna use it. Um, but when we are doing the off-grid thing and we're doing this up, up north, up in, the, up in the cabin, I'm gonna be pumping water out of a barrel into another barrel and there's potential for dirt and sediment to get in there. So I'm gonna run one of these. You know, I think the system is gonna go something like, well, 
I'll, I'll just lay it out. Oh, here, here's the other piece of the puzzle right here. We just got this in yesterday. So this is a uh, flow jet, and I went back and forth between the sure flow and the flow jet. And a lot of people, even though this has got a plastic housing, the housing doesn't look all that nice. Believe it, it's, it's kind of almost looks used. Kind of hope it isn't, but. You know, they run about 50 bucks, not crazy expensive, but they put out 50 PSI, 50 PSI, yep. Which this thing operates on anywhere from 20 to 80 PSI, so, you know, kind of that range. So they recommended this with it. It's got nice rubber mounts. So if you, if you screw this down to a piece of plywood, like I may end up doing, it should be very quiet. They said this is a very quiet pump. So I'm gonna, and I wired the cabin uh, with a line for 12 volts, so we don't need an inverter, and for this reason, right here, so we could even run this under a under our sink um, up there, and I, I'll pull out some wire for that, so it can run just strictly off, just directly off of a 12 volt car battery, and that's the that's the whole plan, because <clears throat> we won't have an inverter solar setup quite yet, so this will be running on 12 volts. So basically, this is a 50 psi pump. I'm going to be running this from from whatever source, you know, maybe it's just a simple, you know, a simple five to seven gallon um, can, like that one right there. Bring that up, set it next to the shower. I'm probably gonna end up getting some bigger containers as well. But that one you could easily go down and fill it up and then just set it there and be ready for a couple of days worth of showers. From that I'm gonna be running a, at least this is the original plan so far, Running the sediment filter. Is this the inlet or the outlet? Looks like it tells you, yeah, it goes right. No, oh, it's gotta go this way. So that's where it goes. So it'd be on this side of the pump. So over here you're gonna have the input pump, and then this will go right into the simple um, right into the water heater, and that should be pretty straightforward. So and then I'll probably have a quick release depending on if this pump stays in the cabin or comes with it. I don't know yet. I'm, I, I still have to draw this all out and I don't know exactly how it's gonna how it's gonna go down. We'll give you a bunch of fittings with this pump. Looks like there's um, I don't know if those are the quick release ones or not. Mm, no. Looks like you can clip them. In. Well, they are quick release actually. Yeah, I got the half inch pipe as well, pipe threads as well, and these go in, it's kind of a bayonet type setup, and those go in right here, so this comes out and there's a quick release tab right there, you can pull it out, so that's kind of nice, you could theoretically unhook all this, dry it all out, big problem is with these is when you get into freezing temperatures, you know, you want to make sure they're drained, otherwise it'll crack the, the little tank that it's in and also crack pumps, so you want to make sure everything's dried out. So that's why everything has got to have, you know, I'm going to have quick release on probably all of it eventually. So you can just pop it out of there and just let it drain when you're done with it. Uh, we don't plan on going up there in the winter right away, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I'm going to get this thing hooked up to a really temporary setup on my, on my uh, little dolly over here. I'm going to have, every, you know, have the propane tank right over there and have this thing hanging off here and I can just wheel it over and test it out, give it a quick test with a city water supply. or so. Let's put the seal on this side here. We'll put the seal in there. It's not really, you can see it doesn't fit very tight in there, but it's not real crazy high pressure either coming out of this. You just don't want it to be dripping. Screw that onto the shower head. Really, that's it. That's about it. Sure everything's good. Yeah, standard. That's for the igniter system. 
I don't know how long these last. I'm going to assume quite a while. Probably, probably a long time. So that's on there. Okay, so let's turn the let's turn the gas to medium. Water regulator. Let's turn that to minimum, just to so it's not crazy when it comes out. I'm going to turn the propane on. I don't hear anything or smell anything. That's a good sign. I'm going to turn the water on. Make sure this thing's off. Let's see, it's off. Turn that off. Set it down here for now. Turn the water on. Oh, I heard something. I heard it clicking. Regulators on. Let's turn it to small propane. All right. Don't see any leaks yet? Now I'll just turn it on. See what happens. So it is teething right now. I feel heat. I don't know why, because it is off. Oh, okay, no, that wasn't anything, that's just... So let's see here, let's turn it on to water regulator minimum, that. All right, here we go. How hot is it? Oh, man. Yeah getting warm. Let's crank it up all the way. Oh, that's nice and hot there. That's really almost too hot. So minimum, minimum, burn you. That's cool. All right. So that worked. Yeah. Key is just don't use too much water pressure. Actually slow it down a little bit and uh, it seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to see if I can shut the, you can turn this thing off and drain it out. Still got some pressure in there. Still got some warm water in there. You gotta drain this thing out. I'm gonna guess that's what the quick disconnect would do. Pop it out, drain out the tank. Great. Well, now I gotta build a shower for it. Awesome. <laughs>